on Instagram. The next talk will talk about the importance of plastics, rigid plastics, and the engineering in modern life. This will be presented by Julio Arada. He's a PhD in nanoscience and advanced materials. Welcome, Julio Arada, and have a good talk. Good morning. Thank you for the invitation to participate in this uh, Brazilian Congress of Plastics. So uh, I was invited to talk about rigid plastics and engineering plastics. I'm here in the name of Plastic Experience. We have a platform to promote knowledge about plastics. Yeah. Okay, the importance of rigid plastics and engineering plastics in our lives, right? So, to start with, I'd like to mention a few things that we believe are important, and especially the growth of the population after 1,800. We're talking about exponential growth of billion inhabitants. And so we had 1 million in 1800. And this exponential growth happened due to Okay, um, I can't see the whole screen, but let's move forward anyhow. So this growth was due to the evolution of food. So more food available. With large variety, large quantity. And the protection of this food for us to consume uh, from the field all the way to our table has to be very well protected. So then after the food evolution, our growth was also due to the evolution of medicine with new medications, processes, for hips, for mechanical, physical processes, and also uh, any other physical protection, because we have to do this one way or another. Also, the evolution of transport, railroads, river, terrestrial, flight, transport, transport, and the huge evolution in the communications. So we have to communicate in a rapid way. This communication is by metallic wires, non-metallic, and also wireless. So we that's in that way we control the length of the waves. Esses dois últimos séculos, nós vamos avaliar aqui a evolução de 1850, que é o período avaliado de 1850 até 2020. So, going back to the period from 1850 to 220, it was due to the food, as I said, uh, security, transport, communication, and now we're in evolution of new types of foods. So... I'm going to summarize the energetic source, energy sources that we started having. And after this came the technological industry. The first source of energy we know is fire. Where does fire come from? Frank, fire comes from way back in the humanity where fire was dominated. And that this comes from burning wood burning wood, we have heat, and then the technological revolution began. Okay. So the first source of energy was wood, and then the industrial revolution came along, 
with the steam engine. So we developed uh, the textile industry, the steam engine for boats, trains. So this was way back in 1800 with the scarcity of wood, we found another source of energy, which was mineral coal. And in the midst of this, we had the electricity revolution. So we had steel metal transforming uh, steel, good quality steel. With the electricity uh, revolution, we had the communication, the phones, radios, TV, fax. So this is what happened. And the next revolution in the beginning of the 1900s was, was vehicle, vehicles, the automotive industry. Uh, but this is not a scale, a real time. So we have the type of fuels, kerosene, gasoline, etc. And we also had other derivatives like product, chemical products and the manufacturing in series. And then in the beginning of the 1900s, what happened? Plastics showed up. Technically, we call them polymers. And we also started exploring natural gas and optic fibers. So we're still seeing how the information revolution is going um, with developments in uh, robotization, computers, and cell phones. Now, a new revolution that we're having now is the uh, energy revolution with solar panels, uh, wind generation, and renewable power sources. and also genetic engineering. But we are now moving to a new sort of energy uh, source, which we are going to analyze soon. I normally call this uh, CHON, which stands for carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And this goes directly into the food revolution. And this, of course, has an impact on the circular economy. All of these materials we developed basically became waste, right? And waste must be recycled. So this is a summary of our uh, of how, how civilization has evolved. And of course, there's nuclear and quantic energy, um, which will be very interesting as new generations start learning more about this. Don't forget that plastics, well, last year, they have celebrated their um, 100th anniversary. So let's talk about plastics. Plastics can be split into two main groups, rigid polymers and flexible polymers. Technically, we call them uh, amorphous or semi-crystalline polymers. Amorphous polymers have a uh, disorganized molecular structure, and semicrystalline products are a bit more organized, which uh, make them clear. So don't forget about this uh, detail, because we're now only going to be talking about uh, rigid or amorphous uh, plastics. So here we see their mechanical properties. We have common use plastics, which are um, rich in alcohol, while semicrystalline plastics are reasonably smaller on the molecular level than amorphous ones. And we also see engineering plastics. So that is, when plastics can take a temperature above 100 degrees, they are classified as engineering plastics. And this is the family I'm going to discuss with you. And when they can take temperatures above 140 Celsius, we call them high performance plastics. And above 250, they're called ultra polymers. 
So these are the super polymers that we um, frequently see. So how do we define uh, plastic materials? There are some um, important uh, phases to follow. So these are the basic phases to be followed in producing a plastic part. Let's imagine some appliances, some home appliances. And what can use plastic parts? We have to analyze when these appliances will be used and how. So we need to understand the materials, physical and mechanical properties, as well as its electric, chemic, pro chemical properties, and so on. So based on these properties, we'll select what is the best material for our uh, appliance. So for example here, if we are selecting a plastic for an appliance, let's say a fridge or a shower head or a microwave oven or a machine a washer. And here we also see a food processor and a pan. So what are the qualities that we're going to use in uh, these appliances? What mechanical properties do we need to analyze? Let's take a look at what's going to affect uh, what polymers will be selected. In this case, we're focusing on amorphous or rigid polymers. Their may biggest characteristic is that their contraction level is much lower than semicrystalline polymers. Their contraction index is between 0.5 and 1%. Um, and usually at least below 3%. So for any of these appliances, you would need very rigid plastics. The first polymer we're going to discuss here and again, I apologize for not uh, controlling this presentation, is PVC. So PVC is an amorphous polymer. It's a combination of uh, ethene plus uh, vanillic chloride. So this is a polymer that is very resistant to chemical reagents and uh, the action of fungi, bacteria, insects, and rodents. It's a very good uh, thermal, electrical, and acoustic element. It's recyclable, and it's very frequently, frequently used in um, basic sanitation systems. So how do we uh, take water outside the house? Old tubes were uh, made of uh, metal, and now they're all made of plastics. Uh, modern plastics are very resistant and it's, they're very easy to maintain. So PVC is frequently used in this industry and it's also frequently used in uh, landfills. So this is what they use for impermeability um, material. This is because of its density and because of its me mechanical properties. It's often used in uh, drapes. So PVC often gets a bad reputation, but it's one of the most uh, resistant materials and it's frequently used in uh, medical devices. We use it, for example, in um, IV bags. Pills are also often packaged in PVC. Isolation tubes 
boots, which we previously made out of rubber, are currently made uh, from PVC. Another frequent application of PVC is uh, conduits. So basically the casing for electrical wiring. We often call this the umbilical cord um, when it's used for oil perforations and uh, also to uh, transmit um, information codes. So PVC is uh, uh, represents 14% of the Brazilian uh, polymer market. That means about 700,000 tons a year of PVC. The most used material in thermoplastics is polyethylene and then polypropylene, about 21%. And these two polymers added up are about 56% of the industry and the rest is uh, engineering plastics and polyethylene PVC and uh, others, which we'll discuss soon. So that was all about PVC and the next one is polystyrene. Polystyrene is a, a combination of uh, styrene and vinyl benzene. It's very resistant. So where do we use uh, polystyrene? It's frequently used in civil construction as an uh, isolation material. Conventional polystyrene is used in uh, producing EPS, what we call um, foam, and these disposable pads that we use in packaging uh, foods. Um, these materials don't use much plastic. Over 96% is used for this kind of material. So this is the biggest advantage of using uh, polystyrene. It's totally recyclable and it's frequently used in civil construction. So in order to build, um, we use, especially in warm and temperate environments, uh, walls made from EPS. And it's frequently used in disposable materials such as school supplies. We see, for example, that ballpoint pens are made from polystyrene. Uh, what we call crystal polystyrene. So um, school supplies, um, jewelry boxes are often made from polystyrene. Another kind of frequently used polystyrene is what we call high impact polystyrene. It's a combination of uh, ethene and polybutadiene. So by injecting it into an ethene structure, um, it creates high impact polystyrene. It's frequently used in food packaging, especially uh, those that are heat molded, plastic cups, uh, you know, what we use to drink coffee every day. And some of these blow molded packaging, um, such as yogurts. So these are just some details to, you know, uh, remove that bad reputation from some plastics. It's said that polystyrene can release uh, some products which can be harmful for your health. So the question that many people ask is, if I put in some hot coffee in this cup, is it going to release anything into my coffee? Definitely not. Polystyrene at 60 degrees, which is the normal temperature of a hot drink, will not release any volatile particles. Polystyrene will only melt after above 180 degrees. 
So it will not release anything into our drinks. Another use for high impact polystyrene is uh, home appliances. Uh, the entire body shell for a fridge is usually made of high impact polystyrene. Another product that uh, we can discuss is SAN, which is considered an engineering plastic. It's a combination of styrene and acrylonitrile, which is a thermoplastic. So this combination um, creates SAN, which is frequently used in appliances such as blender cups, food processors, and batteries uh, used to store energy. So usually the clear box that you see in some batteries are made from SAN. Another uh, very common polymer is ABS, acrylonitrile betadien styrene. It provides uh, processability. It comes at a low cost it, uh, from styrene. Butadiene causes impact resistance and flexibility, and acrylonitrile uh, provides chemical resistance, scratch resistance, shine, and rigidity. So ABS is frequently used in desktop computers, uh, home appliances such as vacuum cleaners, keyboards, uh, phone handsets, mini toys, and the monitors we use on our computers. Another major use for ABS are phone handsets. Why wouldn't you make it with polystyrene? Well, this one provides chemical resistance, which is required by this uh, product because human beings have a lot of uric acid on our hands. It can also be used in briefcases. Many briefcases are made from ABS and uh, rear spoilers in vehicles. These are often blow molded. ABS is also used frequently in cosmetics. So many of uh, the beauty products we use are uh, made with ABS. Another huge market for ABS is uh, leisure and sports. So for example, it's used in flutes, um, toy trains, toy cars, or, or Legos. Another important material is an amorphous polymer called polycarbonate. It's a chemical reaction resulting from bisphenol A and carbonate. Um, and it's a polyester. It has a high impact resistance, 230 times greater than glass and 40 times uh, greater than acrylics. Its transparency is close to that of grass, excuse me, glass, and it has a high thermal deflection temperature. A logical application would be in uh, headlights for vehicles and medical devices uh, such as hemodialysis equipment, tools uh, like this you see is made from poly uh, polycarbonate or a combination of polycarbonate and ABS. It is often used as well in uh, dashboards and appliances. It's often used as well in um, some sorts of um, uh, drapes as well as police shields. Often uh, bottles are also made from polycarbonates. It can also be used in uh, domes and protection areas, uh, football stadiums uh, to protect um, stairs and helmets. So this goes both for sports helmets as, uh, safe, as well as safety helmets in driving. 
So the next element we're going to discuss is polyethylene terephthalate. It uses engineering grade plastic and it has two ways of being produced. When polyethylene is installed, it's amorphous and, it's, and it can be semicrystalline. It depends on how it is processed. So let's take a look at the uh, most frequent applications. PET is frequently used in sports glasses. Um, it's used in goggles. So most of them are made from uh, PET. It's um, not very brittle, so it's frequently used in, uh, instead of polycarbonate because it doesn't create any sharp edges when it breaks. And it's completely recyclable. It's most frequently used in food packaging. So basically most of the blown molded uh, packaging materials are made from PET. You can see here several plastic bottles, ketchup bottles, mayo packaging, all of it is made from uh, PET. And the food packaging for cakes, for sweets, also for uh, chicken, and this is the application of PET with this wonderful property, especially of what? Transparency. Another application that I showed here, and this is, I took a photo in a supermarket. Here you can see all the different applications for this. So it's a thermo uh, process. And these protection uh, plaques, these transparent, uh, these are done with polyethylene thermo thermo form. So this is the information. And uh, another engineering plastic, it's the nylon six and nylon six six. The nylon six is where we, it, it's a yellow translucent and thermoplastic and the nylon six six has a different uh, property and we make the nylon 6-6. Six, six. This is six carbons and another six carbons. So it's one, it's six plus six. In, in the nylon six, we have five plus one. So this is the nylon. And it's very much used in engineering plastic in the areas of electricity for the hot air and for fuel. So we use the nylon in this automotive industry. It's also used, you can see in this slide, we also use it a lot in uh, fishing lines. So it's used also in textile area. So the textile, industry uses it a lot. It's considered excellent material. Another application where nylon shows up a lot, which we don't give a lot of uh, attention, is these uh, sort of devices to fix things. For example, when you go and when you put a frame on the wall, that plastic part that goes into the wall is made of this type of material. And the idea is for it to adhere to the concrete so it can hold the weight of a picture on the wall, for example, much better if you use also another type of material. Another material that will show up is acrylic. So it's very much used and it's the polymerization of methacrylate and we, it, we also use the poly metacrylate. It's used in optical fibers, optical lenses, decoration, objects. These are uh, trophies for competitions. 
he's pointing them out. All this is done uh, made in acrylic because it's beautiful and it's aesthetical. It's also used in the in vehicles because in the headlights and backlights because it uh, has optical transmission for the light. So when you need a, a bright light and you need to see through it, we use this material. It's normally used in the backlights of, of vehicles and the front part, you can use a different material. Don't forget that polycarbonate has a small disadvantage because it's not that resistant. The so normally we add a cover of silicon to the car lights so that it will be more resistant. And another application for the acrylic is used in, in bathrooms, in hydro massage, the bathtubs for hydro massage is ABS and it has a layer of this product which will give it the scratch resistant. So you can see a bathtub here on the right side of the picture. It will give you a sort of a, a shine and it's very ornamental. Okay. So in a simplified manner, this is what I have to say about engineering plastics. So it, what does it represent in the consumption of plastics? It's more or less 7% of the total consumption. And in these engineering plastics, we can also uh, use them in other areas, in the medical area. And sometimes people make a confusion with polycarbonate. Poly polycarbonate is more used in other technology. It comes from a renewable source with carbon oxide or monoxide. And that's where we make the polycarbonate with new technologies. But to substitute this, we have other plastics with better properties. This is not going to be a topic of my presentation right now. So this is what I wanted to tell you. And in this um, long time of experience working with plastics, I always suggest four books. These books, uh, one of them was written in partnership with Professor Elu Vet. I have another um, book about thermoplastics. And I have another book which was edited, which is called Injection Extrusion of Plastics, and yet another one which is uh, Conductivity Plastic Molds with Thermoplastic Injection, and here in partnership with a colleague, and here in um, partnership with another engineer. So I'm already writing my next book, which is about different types of processes that use the extrusion process. So in a summarized way, and I apologize for the confusion in the beginning due to my non-preparation of the slides. So it was a bit confusing in the beginning. So I would like to thank you all for listening and the commission for having invited me to give this talk. In this talk, just about engineering plastics, it could be a long talk because this is a book about it. You can see on the pyramid, but we were able to give you an idea. And also polyesterine, which is an engineering polymer. No, it's a general use polymer. So that's my tiny contribution for you today. And sorry for the rush and my stress. Even with 50 years of experience, I got stressed. Thank you very much. Ah, it's part of the deal. Don't worry. Well, we thank uh, Dr. Julio Arado. He's a doctor in nanoscience and advanced materials. And 
we we now have a, a few minutes for questions and answers well are the two other things i want to say i want to since i have another two minutes i want to talk about classification i didn't talk about polypropylene or polyethylene and i also there's another group the two other groups our friend philip talked about elastomers which is polyurethane and elastane so in the classification of plastics we have several subdivisions so i talked about polymers otherwise i'd have to talk about all sorts of things so depending on the load it will be transformed this is a sort of self-defense that i'm doing uh, in front of you guys dr julio first question that is uh, come here is marcus Juarez. hi Shir. we talk so much with people that don't understand the subject of social media that they say plastic has bisphenol we know that this is not true we want to, you to clarify this please well this is more used for polycarbonate and it's being substituted substituted by carbon monoxide which has a new chemical reaction so before it was used for baby bottles but today the the problem is the temperature over 250 degrees and we drank a lot of milk and in that type of milk bottle so no one is dead so it's not that temperature that's going to uh, free the element so this uh, it, it's it's a wrong vision that lay people have but that's the truth and the truth has to be said dr julio due to our time once more we would like to thank you for your participation in our event in the brazilian congress of plastic your final words please well the new generation that's coming so the first slide that i talk talked about which are the renewable sources hydrogen oxygen carbon and we will be using these sources to make plastic so plastic is a material that will continue for the future generations so there'll be new combinations and new types of plastic not not new types but new combinations of the raw material and it's totally recyclable so this is my final consideration which i leave as a challenge for new generations and the nanotechnology that is also going to help with all the plastic pro properties using it as an element to uh, fight against fungus bacteria and virus so putting everything together will have a super material so plastic will have a long life for the next generations uh, i don't know how many thousand years ahead uh, who knows if humanity doesn't succumb before that very good very good dr julia rada thank you very much once more we